Today we're going to install the Liberty Brackets. Let's look at the supplies and materials we're going to use. First thing we're going to need is we're going to need the Liberty Brackets. We're going to put in two today, so we have two. Other things that we have that we'll need is we'll need a T-square, measuring tape, our router, a level, safety glasses, since we're going to be working with the power tools, caulking gun with silicone caulk, shims, and our drill with our, with our pilot drill bit and with our Phillips drill bit for our screws. Now, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Scott Toll. I'm with Federal Brace, and this is Brock Seaford, the sales manager for Federal Brace. And Brock, it looks like today we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna have some fun with the half wall yep. and the Liberty plate. Liberty is, in fact, a countertop support plate. Three inches wide, and it comes in, in sizes from eight inches. That would be the eight inches to 10 inches right here, up to 20 inches. Because it's a plate and there's no gusset, there's no flange back here, as, it gets, as they get bigger, we make them thicker so that they can really be strong. The uh, plates from, from uh, Federal Brace are a hefty quarter inch, the smaller ones. The middle size ones are 3 eighths inch. The big ones are a half inch. The other plates in the market are a wimpy little 3 sixteenths. So our plates are absolutely the strongest you can get. Also in the biggest variety of sizes that support a lot of overhangs. They will hide under the counter and they're also extremely easy to install. These plates are steel, right? Yes. Okay, steel. so we sell them in raw steel right. at this point. Mm -hmm. That means that this plate is actually black. That means that we have primed it or we painted have, it? We have primed that black. Okay, so so you, you got to make sure that you want to coat these uh, brackets before you install them. The other thing I want you to describe is these, uh, the, the hole treatment that we do on this. Ah, everything has to be flush after this is installed. So that means the screws also have to be flush with the bracket, which are flush with the wall. So if you put a flathead wood screw in there, then that goes flat, right? Right, goes flat. So that makes, makes sure that your cabinet or your counter is seated, seated all the way across the top of your bracket? That's right. Okay. Takes any strain out of the counter where it might not be level. Okay, the process of mounting a Liberty Bracket is really very simple. First of all, you never want to mount these things any further than 16 inches apart on center. So between 12 and 16 is good. The other thing is, we talked about they're flush with the top plate of the knee wall. And by the way, dropping back on the knee wall, knee wall should always have a double top plate, either two 2x4s two or two 2x6s. Two the first one is nailed into the studs. The second one then is nailed elsewhere where you're not going to have a plate so that you don't have the nails in the way. And Brock, what's the purpose of the double plate? The double plate is, uh, just makes this whole thing a lot stronger. Think of it like uh, how they would construct a windowsill, something like that. Uh, everything is doubled up at that point, mm -hmm. and it's the same thing on this type of uh, okay. construction also. And also, I, I, um, if, if, you're using a, if you're using a longer uh, fastener, mm -hmm. and, you, and you only put one 2x4 in there, you're going you're gonna to screw through the 2x4. Through the well, you're only going to have an inch to go into. That's right. You so You really want as much as you can. Okay, so, so putting two plates on there works, right? Right, absolutely. The thing we want to do now is we want to be able to route out this slot, which one of them we've already done, so that when this plate goes on, this is perfectly flush across here. The back of this plate should be perfectly flush with the back of the 2x4. That puts the holes right here in the center. So Brock, I'm not sure if you covered this earlier, mm -hmm. but uh, these brackets, you said this bracket was a 10 inch bracket? Yes. Okay. Now is the actual length of this plate 10 inches? No, the actual length of that plate is 14.1 inches. Okay. Well, that's kind of confusing. Why don't you explain to okay. me why? All right, at, you, may, at, you may already know that the normal L bracket is measured by the length of the top flange and the vertical flange. Well, no vertical flange. So how do we measure this thing? We say it's a 10 inch bracket because that's the part that supports the thing, that supports the granite. But what we also have on this is 4.1 inches that is on top of the wall right here. Then there'd be another 5 eighths inches of space right here because that's where the drywall would probably go right here and then from there on is approximately 10 inches that really supports the granite that's out underneath the granite that if you 
got underneath the counter and looked up, you'd see it. The rest of it's hidden inside the wall. This is not a practical solution for a standard cabinet-backed support. A structure? No. Okay, so on a cabinet island, you do not want to use the Liberty Bracket? No. You need to have at least a 2 by 4 to tie into. Right. You okay. have to have this uh, wall built something like this. So if I have a cabinet island, mm -hmm. and I want to put a Liberty Plate on there, then I need to create a false wall behind my cabinet wall. Right. Absolutely. And at the same height, Yep. and then, and then mount it, and then I can put my extension on mm -hmm. it. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. All right. Now, from what you were saying, also, this is not a th th this bracket is actually 14.1 inches long. 14.1. We say it's a 10 inch bracket because the support it actually supports 10 inch ex uh, 10 inches. It extends 10 inches out underneath the uh, the countertop extension. That's right. Okay. Now, how far out can I go with the actual extension if I'm using a <coughs> 10 inch bracket? Uh, you can go 14 inches. Okay. So anything up to four inches past the past the support. Right. Okay. Now yes. you you have already you've already pre-routed out um, a, uh, a a groove or a channel for for uh, for the bracket. Uh huh. Uh, we got to do another one. Yes, we do. And see, we as I look at it. this, uh, Brock, and I'm a, I'm I'm just a, you know just a person who uh, who has a who's doing a countertop uh, renovation. I'm looking at that and saying, man, I really don't want to route that out. I really I really don't want to route that out. But you're going to show us how this is a very easy process. So we want to have this thing on 16 inch centers. No more than that. And if you can go less, that'd be great. If we're going to go on a 16 inch center, then the center would be approximately right there. Now we want to create, mark our pocket, so we go an inch and a half over, draw a line. That's a guide, that's going to be to the left. Then we want to go over another three inches. This is the area right here we're going to route out. We're going to route this out a quarter inch. Perfect. Just a hair bigger, just a little bit bigger. Let's talk a bit about the router right here. And your safety goggles. Yeah. <laughs> and your safety goggles, which we put on before we do. This is the router bit right here. This has to be extended a quarter inch from the, from the surface. Take the bracket and lay it up right here and look and see how much clearance you have. All right, well, when you get ready to start this, you can freehand this. It won't be quite, it won't, doesn't have to be really neat as far as straight, perfect lines down through here. But uh, you also, and this thing will actually is pretty easy to control. So what you want to do is you want to get up behind it right here, match up your line here with the, with the bit on the right, on the left side of the bit. Back it up a little bit. That's the first line done. Looks pretty easy. Now we're going to remove all the material between the two cuts, between the two route sections. And this is where you get to kind of have a little bit of fun. Perfect. There you go. Brock, you didn't leave any for anything for me to do on that. Man, I'm bummed. What, 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 what's wrong? What, because I, because you, you're the boss, and <laughs> it's up to us to do the work. You just oh, have okay. to supervise Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, but you did an excellent job on that, and I would say that probably took them, you know, maybe a, maybe a minute and a half, about five minutes of talking, and about a minute and a half of actually uh, routing out there. And now, let's see how flush this is. Again, take the square, lay it down right there, and as you can see, there is no clearance anywhere along that line. This is a perfect quarter inch flush mount. If you really have time in your hands and you have nothing better to do in life than do it the easy way with a router, you can cut this with a saw and a wood chisel. And it's a matter of marking off quarter inch down, then taking a saw 
and putting numerous cuts across here down to that quarter inch mark, by the way on both sides mark it, and then take the wood chisel and slowly chisel it out. Now you're probably going to have to use a rasp and you may have to even do some filling when it's done if you take too much, but it can be done. It's just very time consuming and after the second or third one you'll come down a learning curve and be able to do it much faster. Take quarter inch plywood and put filler strips between the brackets in order to bring it up to level. So you're going to have at least a quarter inch right here that has to be filled in with the drywall board, whatever is going to be the board, the, the fascia board. But it's easy to do. This is simple. You just need plywood now, quarter inch plywood. And you would also want to take that additional quarter inch into right. account for the height of the bar. Right. Whenever, whenever right. you were doing it that way. So Brock, you've made a huge mess. And That's right. And <laughs> But now we still have to continue because we have to mount our... Um but I, b I believe the servants are going to clean us up, aren't they? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I'm one of the servants. There you go. <laughs> okay. You <can. laughs> All right. Okay, so now we have to mount these plates, right? Right. And so um, we've got the plates in position. Your, that, that's another nice thing about routing out is that it just gives you the, the location that you're going to put this yeah. uh, plate. So as long as we make sure that we are level back or that we are flush back here mm -hmm. on the back side mm -hmm. and we already know that we're flush over the top, we need to make sure that this is level though, correct? Uh, yeah, but you might as well go ahead and mark the holes okay. and drill them now. So we're going to the so we're gonna go ahead and mark the holes. Right. And I would suggest going ahead and putting these screws in loosely. Uh -huh. So that way if we have to shim them, we can easily shim them. All right, so I'll go ahead and get ready to drill out. So, did we get a new drill bit yet, Scott? No, this is, this is the same dull drill bit that I was using yesterday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is, is, that the, is that the driver is even, uh, the battery's a little deader on the driver, so this could really take some time. That's that, good. That loose enough? Yep, that's good, perfect. Okay. Next thing we want to do now is we want to check the plumb on this thing. Here we have now perfectly flush bracket that's level. All right, let's go to the next one. Marking the holes? Okay. Put the plate on, switching out the driver here. Hey, square. Right on the money. All right, and okay. Level. Look level. at that, guys. So we've got, uh, we've got level in this plane. And we've got level going across our brackets as well. So when a countertop gets installed on this one, you know it is going to be perfectly mounted. Now, the next step naturally would be to put the wall board on the front, then to take our glue, put glue here and all down through here, and then lay the countertop on top of it. And the, and the glue is like a regular caulk. You can use silicone. You could use a, uh, you could use a countertop adhesive um, on top of your brackets. You can, uh, as Brock was indicating, you can glue all the way across that, that wall board. Now, the excellent thing about this particular application is, is that when we put our shelf up here, mm -hmm. that shelf is going to be supported across the entire length of this 2x4 uh, right. wall. And then, in addition, it's going to be supported <coughs> off of our brackets. Yeah, but let's think. Let's talk about a few other oddities that happen on this. Because this is a wall, that means that that your countertop that you're going to have on here, two thirds of it's going to be hanging off to the front of this. That means that not only these have to be really strong and secured well, but the wall itself has to be strong and secured well. It can't be moving at all any direction. Ideally. It should be fastened really securely to the cabinets or to maybe an L-shape arrangement going around the cabinet and then everything down to the floor. Or again, maybe on both ends connected to the ceiling. If, you're, if your substructure is not sound, then neither is going to be your supporting bracket. Your, bra your brackets aren't going to be sound either. Absolutely not. So it doesn't do any good to mount quarter-inch brackets to a, uh, to a, to a quarter-inch thick uh, piece of plyboard. Not a bit. <laughs> okay, so Brock, we've got our we've got our Liberty plates mounted to our to mm -hmm. our to our wall to our structure. Mm -hmm. um, they look beautiful. It was relatively easy to put them on. Um, the routing was uh, relatively simple. We've we've uh, 
we have put to bed the whole idea that that's a really hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. Now, this bracket is not the only plate bracket that we have. Oh, no, no. We just created a new one. Well, in the last six months. Okay. Let me pull it out. <laughs> I just happen to have one in my pocket. This is our too big carrier to fit in your pocket. <laughs> plate bracket. I'm sorry, what was that? The carrier? The carrier. Okay. The carrier is also a plate in that it installs on the wall. The difference being is this one has a small gusset. Uh, you're essentially, Brock, you're taking in, uh, you're, you're basically doing the same procedures mm -hmm. as, the, uh, as the Liberty. You're going to route out or build up to the quarter inch. Right. And that's going to be mounted. Now, I guess that the, the, although this flange is very small and not very obtrusive, it's probably not going to bang your knees on it. Uh, with the back plate against your substructure and that gusset coming out, that's a very strong bracket. This is that is what you're saying? This is an extremely strong bracket. Okay, good. Uh, probably not as strong as a normal gusset Dell bracket, but still extremely strong. Okay. That is an excellent application for your heavier mounts, for your outside mounts, things like that. Yes. Liberty, um, as, a, as an alternative, the carrier would be a big brother, or heavier, a heavier lifter than, than the Liberty. Big brother. That's exactly right. Okay. And... A lot of carriers are finding their way indoors because it's a really nice, strong, well-made, supportive bracket. And I, I would say it's, it's practically a zero on the knee knocking scale. Right. <laughs> okay, great. All right, so Brock, we've, we've, uh, we've, we've put our wood shelf on. In this mm -hmm. instance, we used a wood shelf on our, on our, on our Liberties. Um, we, we left the fascia off so you can see that there's no down flanges. Uh, this is, this is a, a practically an invisible bracket. Right. And even, e even, though, even though we're only an inch off of the end of the, uh, the countertop support here, you can't really even see them from a distance in the front. So, uh, so this is an excellent hidden bracket. You want a floating countertop. You want a hidden concealed uh, mm -hmm. support. The Liberty is an excellent uh, choice for you, correct? It's the best you can get as far as the strongest, the thickest, and it's one of the easiest to install. Great. All right. Well, we appreciate you uh, joining us on this installation guide. And um, if you need more information, contact us. You can give our customer service a call or, uh, or go to our site, www.federalbrace.com. We've got more installation guides. We've got resources for you. Anything that has to do with countertop support, uh, you'll find it there. Give Brock a call. He'll be willing to help you out. We thank you and, uh, and hope, that, uh, hope that your countertop installation goes great. And if you would, please, if you need uh, advice and so forth, please call our dealers. You can find them on our dealer locator at www.federalbrace.com. Exactly. Thank you. www.federalbrace.com. That's it. Thank you.